lived through the worst massacre on European soil since the First Reich. The first worst single killing, after which bodies were interred, reinterred, dug up to hide the evidence, reinterred, so that the whole east of Bos was heaving with the remains of 8,000 young men and boys. Uh, my father and my twin brother and, and myself, we knew that we couldn't go to the Dutch base. We knew that uh, uh, if, we, if we go there, we might be uh, separated by the Bosnian army, then killed later. So we decided to walk through the woods to Tuzla in this, in this uh, uh, event uh, called the Death March. So I walked for, I would say, uh, six days and five nights to Friedi. So just, I would say, five kilometers as I started to, 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 to walk, they started to shoot. And I lost, I lost the sight of my twin brother and father. And ever since, I, I had never seen them again in my life. So then something from the inside kept telling me that I should move forward and that I shouldn't look back. And I even saw people who didn't respect the order, the column. They were just fighting and running up front of the column. Someone, something from the inside kept telling me, Hassan, you should follow them. So I did, and I think that saved my life. I was constantly pushing, pushing forward. I think that saved my life. Uh, talks like Hassan's are really inspiring. They allow my younger generation to really empathize with people like his, and it shows that we need to be vigilant in our times against any sort of racial hatred or discrimination. And it's just really inspiring to hear how he's pulled together through such strife and such difficult times to be where he is now. And he's now spread this information to us, which we're going to relate on to other people, hopefully raise awareness and momentum about this sort of thing. But also, firstly, for me, I found it really inspiring to hear about someone who's throughout all the challenges posed to him. For example, when uh, he lost his skin at the bottom of his feet when he went through a river, to show that even through this unbelievable pain, he can still go on and move forward, and his natural human instincts are truly remarkable. In my opinion. So I was here today with uh, these lovely pupils. Uh, I told them my story, you know, and um, I, I realized that they were listening carefully to what I was saying, and uh, I hope that I, in a way, uh, uh, managed to, to leave impression on these young people, and hoping that uh, they, will, they will be, in a way, inspired uh, at least a little bit uh, by my story in uh, terms to get interested in, in these in this subject. Teaching genocide uh, is difficult at the best of times given the complexity of the subject and the enormity of it. Uh, but one thing is really, really clear. is one thing teaching about genocide from a textbook, but by far the most impactful, meaningful and effective way of teaching about genocide is survivor testimony. Um, I am completely shocked um, after hearing Hassan's story because it's really unfair for like people who are treated in a different way just because of the way they're born and something that they have no choice over. So currently I've decided to like tell as many people as I can about this so more people are aware of it and hopefully when I'm an adult or I'm in the position I want to go around to schools or go around to community places and spread the word so I can do my part to help everyone stay safe.